Hi, I am Matic and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For today's video, I'm going to do my final predictions for the 38th Screen Actors Guild Awards. But before that, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you will be updated to my latest videos. Anyway, let's get started. <laughs> The 38th Screen Actors Guild Awards will happen on Feb 24, 2024, Feb 25 here in the Philippines around 8 a.m. here and 8 p.m. I think at the United States and it will honor the best TV and movie performances of the last year. Barbara Streisand will receive the Life Achievement Award at the Screen Actors Guild Awards so I am expecting a montage of her amazing film career and I don't know who is going to present her award but I am so looking forward for her speech there and then let's now proceed to the nominees and my prediction for each of the movie categories so let's start with the outstanding performance by a male actor in a supporting role the nominees are Sterling K. Brown for American Fiction Willem Dafoe for Poor Things Robert De Niro for Killers of the Flower Moon, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, and Ryan Gosling for Barbie. I mean, it's pretty obvious that Robert Downey Jr. is going to win for this category because he swept all of the award shows from the Golden Globes, the Critic Choice, and the recently concluded BAFTAs. So, my money is going to be on him. Uh, he is my bet to win. For the SAG and the Oscars as well and do I think that there is going to be a surprise winner I don't think that there is one but if we are picking the second best for this category my pick would be either Robert De Niro or Ryan Gosling but I guess Ryan Gosling's nomination for all of the award shows is a representation of how he excellently created Ken in the movie Barbie and for Robert De Niro, it's actually a recognition of his amazing performance in Killers of the Flower Moon. And I don't know the exact amount of nomination that he has, but he already won two Academy Awards before. And I don't think that he's going to win for this one because everyone is rooting for Robert Downey Jr. On the other hand, Willem Dafoe is nominated for the SAG Awards for Best Supporting Actor while his co-actor, which is Mark Ruffalo, is nominated for Best Supporting Actor at the Academy Awards. So it's unlikely for him to win at this point. And another nominee is Sterling K. Brown, who is nominated for his performance in American Fiction, although American Fiction is gaining a lot of momentum in terms of popularity leading up to the Oscars, I don't think that this is going to be on his favor as well if he's going to win for Best Supporting Actor because Oppenheimer has already created the frontrunner status and with Robert Downey Jr.'s impeccable performance, this is definitely a sure win for him at the Oscars and especially at the upcoming SAG Awards. For outstanding performance by a female actor in a supporting role, the nominees are Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks for The Color Purple, Penelope Cruz for Ferrari, Jodie Foster for Nyad, and Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. I think we have the same narrative for both supporting categories. Divine Joy Randolph has been winning all of the award shows from the Golden Globes up until the BAFTAs and she is definitely the front runner for this category. Now, with the other nominees, let's start with Emily Blunt. I really love her performance in Oppenheimer. However, her screen time is her disadvantage because although she gave, every time that she is on screen, she gave impeccable performances. But if we compare it to the other nominees who have more screen time than her, that's her disadvantage and that's the reason why, although I love Emily Blunt, she is unlikely to win for this category. Next, Daniel Brooks is nominated for her performance in The Color Purple. 
while she gave an, an amazing performance in this movie, I don't think that she has the advantage of winning because if we look at the nominees for the Academy Awards, she's the only actor nominated for that movie. And it's unlikely for her to win as well in the SAG Awards, although the whole cast of The Color of Purple is nominated for Outstanding Performance by a Cast in a Motion Picture. Next, at, I think this one, I discussed this during the SAG nominations announcement. This is the surprise nominee, Penelope Cruz, for her amazing performance in the movie Ferrari, which some think that should be nominated for numerous award shows including the Oscars. But unfortunately, she was only recognized by the Screen Actors Guild Award. And do I think that she is going to win for this one? I don't think that she has a chance of winning, although we witnessed Emily Blunt winning the Best Supporting Actress for her performance in A Quiet Place, which she was snubbed by a nomination at the Academy Awards. So maybe that could happen, but since we are witnessing the Vine Joy Randolph's frontrunner status winning all of the awards from the Golden Globes up until the BAFTAs, then it's unlikely for Penelope Cruz to win for this one. And lastly, um, Jodie Foster, for her performance in Nyad, is actually my personal favorite. If I'm going to pick which of these nominees do I think should win the Best Supporting Actress, my pick would be Jodie Foster. However, since she did not win any of the precursor award shows leading up to the Oscars, and, and that's her disadvantage, then... She is, I'm thinking objectively, even though I love her performance, I don't think that she is going to win for this one as well. And it's going to be the Evangel Randolph, no matter what. And, and that's it. The same goes for the supporting actor. For outstanding performance by a female actor in a leading role, the nominees are Annette Benning for Nyad, Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon, Kerry Mulligan for Maestro, Margot Robbie for Barbie, and Emma Stone for Poor Things. While Emma Stone won all of the award shows leading up to the SAG and the Oscars, there is a slight possibility that her frontrunner status might change. If Lily Gladstone would win the SAG Awards, then it's going to be a neck-and-neck -neck battle on who is going to win the Academy Awards for Best Actress. So, uh, if we dig deep to it, we can think of what had happened a couple of years ago when Glenn Close was the front runner, winning the Critics' Choice, the Golden Globes, and the Screen Actors Guild Award. And then, she was defeated by Olivia Colman of the BAFTA. And then, come to a surprise, she also won the Academy Awards for Best Actress. So that might happen if Lily Gladstone will win the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actress. But right now, I think Emma Stone is the front runner for this category. She is definitely going to win the Academy Award for Best Actress if she wins this one, the SAG Awards. And she is still my prediction on the Best Actress category here. However, there might be a surprise like Annette Benning, who is gaining a lot of momentum for her brilliant performance in Nyad. And I've read a lot of forums and comments that she might be the surprise winner here for the SAG and the Oscars because she gave an amazing performance and she has been nominated multiple times and hasn't won any awards for Best Actress, especially at the Academy Awards, so she might be the surprise winner for this one. The other two nominees, Kerry Mulligan and Margot Robbie, although they gave exceptional performances, has this kind of disadvantage because they, have, they didn't really win any precursor award shows. So, with regards to Annette Benning has a surprise possibility, those two were unlikely to win because... First of all, Margot Robbie was snubbed at the Academy Awards and Maestro is 
getting this tag as an Oscar bait movie and a lot of people think that it's an overrated movie even though I feel like Maestro is an exceptional movie. I'm just reading comments and I'm just checking other people's perspective about the movie but on my personal perspective, I really love Maestro. I really love Kerry Mulligan's performance. It's just that majority of the forums and comments that I am reading has this negative attachment to the movie Maestro. So my prediction for Best Actress would still be Emma Stone and I want her to win for this one even though Lily Gladstone win would be a good representation and a career highlight. If we think about performances, their screen time, their presence on the movie and how they manage to be an exceptional actress with their subtleties and all of their executions for each of the scene, my picks would still be Emma Stone. For outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role, the nominees are Bradley Cooper for Maestro, Coleman Domingo for Rustin, Paul Giamatti for The Holdovers, Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer, and Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. Uh, this is the toughest category to predict because Killian Murphy and Paul Giamatti are neck and neck on who is the true front runner for the best actor. And I think this is also happened last year when Austin Butler and Brendan Fraser were neck and neck to be in the front runner for best actor last year. So I think I said this during my reaction video that my brain says Killian Murphy is going to win but my heart wants Paul Giamatti because those two performances is really hard to pick which one is the better ones because equally they are exceptional on their own and it's really tough for me to, to pick which one is the best and I don't know which one I don't know which performances the Saga Awards would recognize, but those two performances for me should win the Best Actor. Uh, I don't want to discuss the other nominees like Bradley Cooper because I am repeating myself about the Maestro, Oscar Bait situation, or Coleman Domingo and Jeffrey Wright. I think this is their first Oscar nominations, although their films and performances were exceptional. In terms of who is getting a lot more buzz or who is getting a lot more conversations, it's going to be Paul Giamatti versus Killian Murphy. And my final prediction would be, I hope it's a tie, but I guess only one will prevail the winner and my prediction would be either, or, either Killian or Paul. I don't want to pick which of them should win the best actor but whoever wins i would be happy between killian or paul and last let's go to the outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture the nominees are american fiction barbie the color purple killers of the flower moon and oppenheimer in terms of the outstanding cast in a motion picture since we are basing the best casting or the best ensemble cast from the Critics' Choice and the BAFTA because the Holdovers wins best casting while Oppenheimer wins best ensemble cast at the Critics' Choice Award, I think it's going to be Oppenheimer. I think that movie will win the best cast because it's a sure win for the best picture and best director. So I guess it's going to be the winner for the outstanding performance by a cast in a motion picture. Now, is there a surprise? I think the surprise would be Barbie winning this one. And my sentimental favorite would be uh, The Color Purple might get it, but it's going to be a long shot for that movie since it was snubbed by the Academy Awards. So my final prediction would be still Oppenheimer. So that's it. I'm so excited for the Screen Actors Guild Awards, especially for the Best Actor. It's really hard to predict 
and I don't want to pick between Killian Murphy or Paul Giamatti. So I leave it is as a tie for now. And then for the best actress, Emma Stone, my favorite. For supporting, it's the Vanjie Randolph and Robert Downey Jr. and Oppenheimer for the best cast. That's it. I am Matic. Thank you for always watching my YouTube videos. And see you at the Sagawards. Bye-bye.